Hello, my name is Nicholas Lejoie. I'm a Marquette University employee here. And uh, I um, just want to talk a little bit about, as we move forward with the campus master plan, uh, bicycle and pedestrian issues. And, um, you know, something to keep in mind is that when uh, university campuses uh, engage in master planning, oftentimes they will have a, a entirely separate bicycle and pedestrian master plan. So, um, you know, other colleges and universities see the importance of uh, designing campus around bicycle and pedestrian use, and uh, we we um, we need to make that an important factor um, as we move forward. So, um, I want to explain a little bit about why bicy bicycling and walking matter, um, specifically on a university campus, and specifically here at Marquette University. Uh, statistically, um, we have some pretty important numbers uh, to talk about, and um, in particular, the uh, U.S. Census tracts, the, the three U.S. Census tracts in which Marquette University lies, have uh, over 60% of commuters reporting that they walk to work in these tracts, and that's really big. Um, in fact, it's so big that these three tracts hold the highest walk commute scores in the state of Wisconsin, and they're in the top 100 nationally, um, and that's including all other campus universities nationwide uh, and major dense cities, you know, places like Manhattan and Chicago and Washington, D.C. and Boston, where a lot of people walk, you know, our, our campus um, here in Milwaukee has in the top 100 of those uh, uh, census tracts nationally in terms of people that walk to work. Um, and um, a, a University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee study that was just conducted this past summer in which I participated uh, showed that in on the corner of 16th and Wisconsin in the summer months in July had um, nearly 2,000 pedestrian crossings in a two-hour time period in the afternoon. And I'll show you some of those statistics in a, in a moment here, but um, you know, it just shows that, that one intersection in the summer months when we weren't even having uh, regular semester hours, uh, we had nearly 2,000 pedestrian crossings. Here's a, uh, a look at that census information. Um, the dark color, the darker the orange um, or brown is an indication of a higher percentage of walk to work, um, uh, walking or walk commuting. And you can see the census tracts and where, where Marquette's located are, are very dark orange. They're over 60%. Um, the UWM study, the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee study that was conducted um, with Dr. Robert Schneider, um, showed that we had nearly 2,000 um, on, in that time period in July. Uh, um, so that's significant. Uh, and you can see there's a number of, of bicycling um, uh, numbers there as well, a uh, considerable amount as well. Um, and as far as bicycling in, on campus and in the city, we had uh, between 2006 and 2013 a, a, a doubling of daily bicyclists in the city of Milwaukee um, to over 3,000 per day. Uh, and in fact, a, a couple years ago, Milwaukee ranked number one in the country in uh, the rate of new bicyclists, um, the rate of increasing bicycling uh, uh, reported. And so bike, biking is a growing uh, uh, form of transportation in Milwaukee, and uh, it's rapidly becoming a very important uh, uh, consideration for transportation in, in, as we plan our city and campus. Um, uh, campus numbers are lower uh, on Marquette currently than in the rest of the city. But we do have an opportunity now to fill in that gap as we plan and make our master plan to try to reconnect our campus uh, by bicycle. And, uh, you know, as far as health statistics go, we all know that um, activities like walking and biking are very healthy. But uh, just to demonstrate, uh, uh, it's found that uh, studies show that uh, nearly uh, $544 in medical expenses per year can be saved by just biking 30 minutes a day. Um, on average. And um, those who, who bike to work or school in the first year of doing that type of commute, they, they lose on average about 13 pounds. Um, and of course, we know that uh, biking uh, and walking can reduce 
automobile use and lower congestion and, and, our, and carbon emissions are good for the environment and, uh, and our health. So these are uh, definitely all positive outcomes from the choice of bicycling and walking. Another major consideration uh, for us here on campus and in the city of Milwaukee is the rise of bike share and uh, Bubbler Bikes is the Milwaukee bike share program that started uh, now a couple years ago in 2014 and um, in the statistics show that in 2015 between March and November we had nearly 20 uh, what well let's see here 21,176 trips um, in that time frame and those are really good numbers. That's been growing uh, uh, continually in, in the uh, rise of this bike share program. And But what's of note is that nearly 6,000 of those trips were by University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee pass holders used just between the uh, months of October through November. They uh, purchased uh, several uh, bubbler bike share stations in October and installed them and have been incredibly popular with the students. They had over uh, um, nearly 6,000 trips uh, in that time frame uh, from university students. And that shows that bike sharing and university campuses really do go together and could uh, really take off here on campus as well. Um, our MU student government did just negotiate to purchase a bubbler station will be installed this coming uh, spring. Um, so this is something that uh, should be considered an important um, transportation factor coming in the future that we need to plan for uh, more of this. Um, and, and as we plan our, our campus, uh, we, want to, we want to consider that students are going to be preferring to use things like bubbler bikes uh, to get around the city. We do face a number of challenges uh, when we consider where our campus is located and how it's been designed currently um, with regards to bike and pedestrian uh, priorities. There are several pathways on, on campus, unfortunately, that are not compliant with the American Disabilities Act. Um, there's, uh, there's a couple that are completely inaccessible by wheelchair. And of course, if, they, if you can't get somewhere by a wheelchair, you're not going to be able to get there by any kind of wheel, uh, including a bicycle wheel. And, um, so these are these have limited access. There's also sidewalks on campus that are um, very narrow and uh, too narrow to handle the amount of demand of pedestrian traffic through them. Um, and as far as bicycle infrastructure, there are really are too few and uh, several poorly placed bicycle racks um, on campus, um, as I'll demonstrate here in a moment uh, with some photos uh, to kind of show you that. Uh, Bicyclists that do lock up their bikes are, um, are choosing to lock up them up in places other than bike racks, and the bike racks that are in place, are a lot of them are full. Um, there's also no delineation of, of bike pathways on campus. There's absolutely no signage of, of bike pathways. So here's a map of campus, and um, as you'll see down here on the south end near Torrey Hill, the entrance to the, uh, to the Haggerty Art Museum uh, down here in Clybourne, there's a, this is the entrance to campus, um, and that is a, a, a nice broad walkway, but unfortunately it's only accessible to uh, somebody on foot, um, and it, it includes no ramps whatsoever. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, uh, bicyclists um, on, in the front of uh, Marquette Hall, in particular here, will lock up their bikes. This is a common site. Will lock their bikes up to the uh, the railings of the entrance of the building. This is the um, the intuitive entrance of the building. Most faculty, staff, and and students come in and out of Marquette Hall through the front of the building. There are no bike racks on that front of the building, only in the rear. Um, and uh, this is what you commonly see. Similarly, outside of Johnson Hall, um, you'll see bike bikes locked up um, uh, to the. Uh, benches that are the, the park benches that are uh, sitting in the front there. Uh, there's a bike rack in the back of that building as well, which is um, which is not used nearly as much. Um, and uh, in the first day of classes, bike racks, many bike racks on campus outside residence halls, were completely packed and full with bikes. So um, these are all pictures that I took over the last couple months to come and de demonstrate um, some of these issues on campus. Another uh, issue we have. 
a challenge is uh, is this, and everybody knows what that is. It's a uh, the market interchange is a uh, is, like it or not, better or worse, is a um, you know permanent fixture in our neighborhood, and it really forms um, our corner of the city, and we have to live with it. It does provide uh, an access point. It's a major access point for traffic coming through. Uh, campus uh, for for shipping shipments of goods and uh, and transportation and it's a it's a, one of the busiest intersections uh, in the state if not the most busiest intersection in the state um, but it is a barrier for pedestrians and bicyclists and uh, just humans in general when you're on the ground and you're not using this uh, interstate uh, this interchange it is is a barrier. This is a um, artist rendition of the interchange. The Marquette Interchange uh, here is shown in orange, and the campus of Marquette University is up in the left-hand corner in purple. And you know, it, you get this this real visual sense that this is sort of a blockade, a wall, uh, a scar cutting through the city that um, really makes it difficult to traverse uh, naturally from one point to the other through this system. For instance, if I wanted to cross campus, uh, from campus to the Walker's Point or to the Global Water Center, I could not do that. It's impossible to walk through here um, or traverse in any way this in this uh, direction uh, through campus, uh, from, from campus to the, that point of the city. You know, when you're standing on the ground, this is what you see. If I wanted to walk in that direction or travel in that direction, it's impossible. Um, you know, if I wanted to go from Sensenbrenner Hall uh, to to downtown, this is what I, I look towards. Um, so it's, it, it's inaccessible and, and, it, and it blocks much of campus from the city. Um, these are the ways for pedestrians uh, to get it from, from our campus over to downtown. We have, you know, uh, sidewalks that are, and uh, crosswalks that are, Quite narrow and and long, and uh, have to traverse uh, nearly half a block of, of streets and and ramps to get from one point to the other, um, and it can be very dangerous as cars are coming on and off of the freeway. Um, they are going at rapid speeds and not at uh, at uh, rates that are are conducive to the safety of pedestrians here on campus. As far as bicycle infrastructure. Uh, th this map shows the um, the colors of uh, our our bike paths and bike lanes, major bike lanes through the city of Milwaukee, and uh, a large side of the east side, and um, you know increasingly on Walker's Point, uh, and uh, uh, you know up and down the lake. There's a lot of uh, uh, building out of of bike paths and and uh, bike infrastructure. But the big gap in the middle where Marquette camp, Marquette's campus is, is uh, void of, of uh, a great deal of bike infrastructure. And, uh, you know, right here, there's just, there's really nothing. So, um, you know, we need to focus on really finding ways to connect our campus better for pedestrians, bicyclists alike. And, uh, you know, it's important as we expand our campus and our, our influence in the city, uh, that we make better connections from uh, from Marquette's campus to downtown, uh, from Marquette to the Global Water Center, from uh, our campus to Valley Fields as we uh, build out more there, uh, to the near west side, and, and so forth. We, we really need to work harder than most to, to build these connections and make these uh, stronger for bicyclists and pedestrians. You know, a question that we should look at as we move forward here um, is, uh, you know, are the ways that we've built our campus traditionally, um, which have largely been focused on transportation around the vehicle, around the automobile, you know, um, as we've designed our campus with a lot of surface parking lots, um, is that something that we want to do in the future? You know, are parking lots like this the, the best use of space, in a, particularly in a dense urban neighborhood. You know, is this the kind of space that we want to have? So that's a question we need to ask ourselves. You know, we do have a lot of parking here. Um, here's a list of uh, uh, the 2014 uh, list of 
uh, total number of, of bike, or I'm sorry, of, uh, of car passes, of vehicle parking passes on campus. And, um, you know, there's quite a few people that have parking passes here. And that, of course, makes sense since we, that's a, that's how the campus was in the last 50 years really designed around people coming and going via car. Um, a particular note is that here you'll see uh, nearly 1,200 passes uh, are 24-hour permits. And these are permits for, in particularly, um, most of them are for students that live on campus. And they keep their cars parked on campus 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, many of them keep them here parked and use them very rarely. I've seen, um, you know, anecdotally, a, a lot of student cars parked in uh, the structures and on campus that have dust on them, um, you know, because they get used a couple times a semester. So, you know, many students might need cars. They might need to have 24-hour passes, and they might have jobs and internships that they have to get to, and, uh, and they don't have any other sort of way. Um, but we should maybe start questioning and uh, asking that question of, is there a better way for students that live on campus um, to get around? Is there can we provide some amenities for them so that they don't need to have a car on campus? Um, can we have a grocery store here? Can we have some retail that's closer? Can we uh, provide things like more bubbler stations and uh, better transit options? Uh, and um, you know, are there other forms of transportation that might make more sense for our students to be using? Uh, here on campus instead of automobiles. Um, so, you know, as we move forward here, I, I guess the question is, do we want to design a campus that, you know, looks like this, where our city blocks are, are largely, uh, we have to dedicate l large portions of them that look like this, you know, or do we want some that look more like this, you know, or this, or this? you know, with more dense urban development? Do we want our, our campuses, our city blocks on our campus to look like this? You know, or do we want to have green space available more so and uh, have options like this, or this, or this? So those are, you know, some questions to, that we should ask ourselves as we, as we start planning here. And, um, you know, safety is a really important feature as well uh, that we need to talk about. This graphic representation I think is appropriate in, in terms of how pedestrians often can feel trying to cross the street or, or as they navigate on sidewalks and through our city streets. It can be very uh, perilous and, and unsafe places for people who are on bicycle or on foot. Um, I'm going to show you here a, a quick little short video that was produced by Wisconsin Bike Federation. Um, and it was a just a, a recording of a project that was done by, in conjunction between Marquette Police and the City of Milwaukee Police Department uh, to enforce pedestrian laws, crosswalk laws, um, f uh, for uh, vehicles that were in violation of this. And uh, during the day that they did this operation, nearly 58 uh, motorists, I believe, were or over 58 motorists were pulled over and cited or ticketed uh, or given warnings for violation of the uh, of the law. Tom Held with the Wisconsin Bike Fed joining the Milwaukee Police Department in a pedestrian yield enforcement project. That motorist is just about to get a warning from the Milwaukee police because they did not yield in the crosswalk. It's clearly marked, the lights are flashing, and we have a Marquette student named Dakota Elm who is uh, attempting to cross or was attempting to cross. The police have a grant from the Department of Transportation to enforce the traffic safety law, which is a simple one, yield to pedestrians in crosswalks. The bike fed has been participating in this to try to convince motorists that it's the safe way to go and it will protect lives, saving lives in Wisconsin. So, you know, safety is a real issue and it's unfortunate. Um, even here in the early part of this year, we had a, a grad student seriously hit 
seriously hurt um, uh, when when struck on Wells and 17th in a hit and run. Uh, it seems like it's a perennial problem where we have uh, uh, pedestrians being struck by cars on campus. Um, it's also, you know, as we've increased the number of cyclists in the city, we've had uh, a number of unfortunately deadly uh, incidents of, of bicyclists being killed by vehicles. And um, a study that was shown uh, by UWM about uh, bike crashes that involved vehicles showed that it's about 60% of those crashes were the fault of the of the driver of the of the motorist behind the wheel of the car, you know. So we really need to think about um, the safety and the you know the lives that are at stake, uh, not only of, uh, of of the of the members of Marquette University, but of our city and um, community. That um, that we want to make this a safe environment as possible for for all of us. So how can we plan a more bike and pedestrian friendly campus? How can we do that? Well, there's a few ways we can. Um, some simple improvements to our infrastructure uh, that are uh, inexpensive and uh, sensible, I think, are is a first start. Uh, a few of them are uh, designated bike pathways through campus. Um, we can install covered bike shelters on campus. And we can work with the city to uh, build traffic calming measures um, on, on and near campus for um, improving uh, uh, safety for pedestrians and for bicyclists as well. So um, here's a, an example of some of those. This is a picture, I believe, off of UW Madison's uh, campus. They have uh, designated pathways that are um, color-coded for bicyclists and pedestrians uh, on pathways. Uh, this serves as a function to, um, to, to allow a space dedicated for the bicyclists and, and those who are on foot, but also to encourage bicyclists and to make them feel welcome. Um, th it uh, provides a, a safe space for both the pedestrians and the bicyclists to traverse, even in a shared space. I'll show you a, a photo in a moment here where there's a shared space of pedestrian bicyclists. It's a, it, it, it creates an awareness for um, both pedestrians and bicyclists that they are welcome on campus. Um, and I'll show you something also called a cycle track in a moment that is a, another option that we can include in campus. Um, this is a shared space on, on, uh, on, a, on a university campus that uh, is just a very inexpensive uh, paint delineation on the, on the uh, pavement that uh, provides a space and pathway for cyclists and pedestrians alike. This is a, uh, a cycle track. Now this one in particular is um, off of the street traffic, and this is often considered the safest uh, type of bike path that you can have parallel to a street. What we've, what this kind of the cheapest, easiest way for um, bicycling to be given space for uh, uh, transportation in our city grid is uh, bike lanes, but they share space with traffic and, on the streets, and a lot of New bicyclists, in particular, feel unsafe uh, and feel a barrier to entry from that type of um, limitation of infrastructure. So what this does, it actually segregates bicyclists from pedestrians and from automobiles off the curb in a safe space for cyclists. Um, this is a segregated bike path on the city street, um, so it serves a lot of the same purpose that that cycle track does. Um, but it's still on the city street, uh, but the bollards that are you see on the left uh, provide a segregated space for the cyclists. This is something similar, uh, but using planters and uh, um, pavement uh, coloring that was done in Boston uh, to provide a, um, a safe space for bicyclists. Uh, as far as bicycle shelters, we can improve our space for parking bikes on campus. Um, and uh, by providing you know something f for them to uh, have a shelter against the weather uh, and safety um, can also provide safety for for uh, from crime and protection if they're well lit and uh, monitored by our, our campus uh, police and uh, it also will encourage more people to come to and from campus via bicycle when they see that there's you know really premium bicycle uh, parking available on campus 
Some of these can also include bike, public bike pumps and workstations that uh, um, are a nice feature to, to offer for uh, uh, those who might need to pump up a, an inner tube or might need to fix a flat tire or they have some issue with their bike that they need to quickly fix. Um, they, some of these uh, bike stations and shelters can, can offer that as well. And just to give you an example here, no, this is not my bicycle, but they, this is a photo I took last winter outside of Rainer Library. shows that people do choose to bike all year round, winter, summer, uh, doesn't matter what inclement weather's out, the people will choose to bike in it no matter what. Um, and so we can offer things to them at a, at a relatively lower cost, uh, like these covered bike shelters. Uh, this is a rather large one, um, which offers a double side-by-side -side, uh, bike racks underneath. Um, this is one that was built on the east side of Milwaukee, outside a former bike shop that uh, uh, is a smaller one, but uh, provides uh, uh, shelter from the weather. Uh, and those bike pumps, this is one that was just recently installed um, at the edge of the Oak Leaf Trail on uh, uh, Prospect near Mason Street downtown by the lake that uh, the community, the neighborhood there, really wanted to have uh, um, a, uh, a public bike pump and, bi and bike work uh, station for all the number of cyclists that come through there and, uh, and offer that as a, um, as a nice feature for them. So something we can do for traffic calming measures is, um, is uh, work with the city to try to build more curb extensions at intersections and crosswalks. And this will narrow the, the streets in those locations, and by doing so, will slow the, the traffic down. It, it will calm the traffic levels to, uh, to be more conducive with speeds that are safe for pedestrians and bicyclists on, on your campus. Um, they, they, project, they also protect the pedestrians who are standing on the sidewalks by providing a buffer. Um, on that extended sidewalk, and they can as also add value to the to the uh, campus by providing a space for landscaping in those uh, bump outs. Here's a, an example of a, a curb extension or bump out at a crosswalk. You can see that um, that narrows the street uh, to a point where it's uh, the cars will really have to slow down more uh, to to be safe through those those areas. Here's an aerial shot of uh, a crosswalk with, um, with uh, some of those features as well. There's rapid, flash, rapid uh, beacon flashing uh, signs in the middle. Um, and uh, these can also include speed tables or um, speed humps that uh, will slow traffic down physically as well. So those are some things we can consider, and I hope uh, that it was useful for you. If you have any questions, uh, my name is Nicholas Lajoie. You can reach me at nicholas.lajoie at marquette.edu, and I hope that uh, that was helpful. Thank you.